Hi, and welcome to Editing Video in the Classroom. I'm Tim Fennell. Now, I know how much we all dislike quizzes, but I can't resist this one. How many cameras do you think we have here in the studio? Must be at least two. I was just looking at the one over there. Three. It's got to be three. Four cameras? Would you believe just one? It just looks like four through the magic of editing. Editing can be more than just cutting away the bad or boring parts of what you have on tape. Editing also helps the producer create style, pace, mood, or even an illusion. Before we dive into the more technical aspects of video editing, let's discover some ways to get the shots we need on tape first. The multi-camera technique you saw me pull off is a great way to add a higher production quality to a newscast that is taped and aired later. First, plan ahead and mark your script where you want to make these camera changes. I suggest making the camera changes as a transition between stories that are unrelated. And don't do it too often, like all special effects. The multi-camera effect is only special if it's used sparingly and with motivation. An important thing to remember when you move your camcorder for a different angle is to change the size of the frame. If your news anchor has a medium shot for the camera one position, make your camera two position a close-up and have your anchor glance down at the scripts during some of the transitions to make it look even better. When cutting between more than one anchor reading on the set, make the size of the frames vary. This just looks better than every shot being framed the same. I think contrast is the key to interest. Give the viewers something new whenever you have the opportunity. Here's your first cool video tip. And now here's Casey Fennell with today's weather. Thank you, Josh. Today is going to be a beautiful day. When you introduce your weather reporter, use a medium shot so that she'll have room to make reference to any maps or artwork behind her. Check out this video weather board. It's designed to spice up your daily forecast. We're going to roll in. Students' teamwork and small magnets can turn a sunny morning into a cloudy afternoon as simple as this. Now back to you, Josh. Got your mic on? If your editing setup includes a switcher that features chroma key, this green mat will come in handy. The switcher can be programmed to ignore certain colors. This forest green is a popular color because it's so easy to avoid wearing this color and few people have eyes this shade of green. Of course, chroma key is most often used when giving weather reports, but you can have fun with it too. Meeting together and we're talking about Hurricane Bob. Here we have our money magazine which shows us some best buys and how to make What if you're taping a speech or some type of presentation and, oops, your subject goofs? Oh, I'm sorry, dang it. Well, you can use your multi-camera technique here too. You don't necessarily have to change angles all the time, but you must change the size of your frame to avoid a common mistake called a jump cut. A jump cut is cutting between two very similarly composed shots. It jars the viewer for a few seconds and will take away from the message you're trying to deliver. You'll see it sometimes with interviews. Say you want to use a couple of different sound bites, but if you edit them together back to back, you'll create jump cuts. One solution is to get a shot of your reporter listening and edit the shot in later. Here, two separate sound bites are used back to back. See how the shot of the reporter hides the jump cut? Graduate students working on a master's degree or PhD in computer science. The College of Charleston sponsors three teams. Each team. Here's how the pros shoot an interview in the field. First, shoot the interview with your subject close up to get the sound bites that you need. Second, after the interview is completed, shoot what's called a two shot of your reporter and subject talking together. This is often used to introduce your interview. Here's something that bugs me, and you'll see it too much on local TV. You see a handheld microphone in a close-up, but it disappears in the two-shot. Well, that's a continuity error. Not good. The best thing to do is to not see the handheld mic during the close-up. After the two-shot comes the reversal. This is the shot of your reporter listening. You may want to get more than one shot of this for the sake of variety when it comes to editing. The last thing to shoot is the B-roll. This is the term for footage of whatever the story is about. The interview and the reporter's narrative is the A-roll, and the cover shots of the topic is the B-roll. Videographers love shooting B-roll. Here are a few helpful hints. Start out with an establishing wide shot of your location. I always like to work my way down to the close-ups, 
So I'll get a couple of wide shots, then some nice medium shots, then the close-ups. Remember, what was said during the interview will guide you on what to shoot. I like static shots with action within them. Remember what I said earlier, contrast is important. Get some shots at various angles and don't let the shots look alike. You can still go. Use the multi-camera technique when taping dramatic scenes. Start with your establishing shot. Shoot the entire scene wide. Then have your actress perform the same scene again, and this time shoot medium shots of the action. When changing angles, remember not to cross the line. Crossing the line occurs when the camera switches sides on a performer, and suddenly your actor is facing in the opposite direction other than he just appeared. It will jar the viewer. I know from the tone of his recent letters that he wants When you to tape dialogue between characters, avoid just showing the person speaking. Shoot listening and reaction shots so you can overlap them when you're editing. <coughs> you create tempo by the length of your scenes. Don't let your eagerness to show off all your angles pressure you to make an edit. Let the story play out. Quick cuts add tension only if there's motivation. smooth flow of movement is what most hope out of editing. Cutting on actions that blend together help create the illusion of reality. When you're shooting the scene, overlap the action. Have your subject do their part two or three times so that you can record at different angles and frame sizes. As a general rule, make the edit just a moment after the start of movement. This helps make the cut invisible. A special effect that's built into your camcorder is the fade. Fading up denotes the beginning of the program. A fade down to black for a second or two, and then fade up again denotes a passage of time. And then a slow fade at the end signifies a conclusion. A great way to reduce time is to use a cutaway. A cutaway is a shot of something not covered by the wide shot, but relevant to the scene. Real life action like the student in a library taking a test takes too long to show on screen. So shoot a cutaway of other action within the library and then go back to our student finishing the test. The audience will accept that time has passed. Editors love transitions. Transitions get you from one scene to another without jump cuts. Some high-end editing machines let you do transitions like dissolves, wipes, and maybe digital effects. If your setup is a machine to machine with an edit controller like most, then you have to be more creative when you're shooting. Having your subjects walk out and walk into the frame makes for smooth transitions. Change in size of frame and your subject's location within the frame helps too. When shooting sports and you know your tape will be edited down, record some whip pans of the crowd cheering. You just take your camcorder and fly it around the crowd. The editor can use a second of this as an exciting transition between highlights. Hello, my name is Joe Wiggins. Making this good use of the three different camera now. perspectives makes for great video production. The repertorial perspective is used when a presenter or reporter speaks directly to the camera, therefore the viewer. This approach is most often seen in commercials, instructional videos, and of course, newscasts. It's best to have your reporter do their on-camera scenes at appropriate times. The pros call their on-camera scenes stand-ups, and they shoot them when they're giving information they do not have the B-roll to support, or as a transition to a new aspect of a story, or maybe as a way to introduce a new location within the story. The objective perspective is used when the camera is observing the action. Your news B-roll is mostly shot in the objective perspective. You also see this in dramatic TV shows, performances, and sporting events. With the subjective perspective, the camera becomes the actor's eyes. The director uses the subjective perspective when he wants the audience to see and to know what the character does. It can have quite an impact. If you can borrow your school's wheelchair, you can add spice to your production by using it as a camera dolly. It can also give you the subjective perspective of a person walking. So it's time to sit down and edit. It's exciting, isn't it? 
Do you know where all your shots are located on your tapes? Do you have your script in front of you with notes about what shots to put where? Music. Have you picked out your music? And what about narration? Did someone voice the script already? Hmm, don't fret. It's your first time. Once your story or program is all on video, make notes of what exactly is on tape and where. This is called logging your video. A basic tape log contains a short description of what you see and a number making reference to the place on tape. Most rewind their tapes, zero the VCR's minute-second counter, and log from there. Log your tapes before you write your final script. This allows you to visualize how the story will come together. Some shots may inspire you to write something you didn't think of earlier. The pros call it writing to video. Instead of this, um, saying it, they found trouble, let's say they walked into trouble. Take note of the size of the frame. CU for close up, M for medium, W for wide, stuff like that. This really helps if someone else is doing the editing. Today, the computer science department is fact. When you're logging an interview and looking for sound bites, be sure to write down the in cue and the out cue. The in cue is the first couple of words in a sentence, the out cue the last couple of words. And be sure to note the length of the entire sound bite. If you're doing a piece with more than one interview, try to shoot your subjects looking in different directions. It's a great way to reinforce two opposing viewpoints on a particular subject and the different angles are another form of contrast that makes your final product more visually interesting. Make note in your log sheets. Voicing your script should be done in a quiet place. Drapes or acoustical tile help cut down on any echo. Using an external mic away from the hum of the camcorder is best, but using the mic right there on the camcorder will work fine too. A camcorder's audio system features automatic gain control. That means when there's no noise, it searches for noise, creating hiss. To avoid hiss on the beginning of your narrative recording, count down from three and then begin reading. Three, two, one. This fall's expectations are higher than ever. For it also makes it easy for the editor to cue up the beginning of your narration. Three, two, one. I like to take music off of CD or cassette and dub it down to videotape so that I can easily work with it. Music sets your program's mood. If you often use music as a background to narration, stock instrumental music comes in real handy. While everyone has a different reason for making a video, most of us just want to tell a story. Editing is basically a decision-making process. The editing equipment is a tool that you use to electronically piece together the scenes that you like in the order that you want. In today's technological world, there are two ways to achieve videotape editing, linear and nonlinear. Linear meaning you start at the beginning and build your program to the end makes going back and making changes in the length of your scenes difficult. Linear editing is the traditional method of having two VCRs wired together with an edit controller operating both. The 1990s brought us affordable nonlinear editing systems. This is the Postbox nonlinear system by Panasonic. It's a computer-based editing system that allows you to instantly access any digital video clips you've recorded on your hard drive. You could arrange the clips along with titles and special effects in any order that you like. The nice thing about nonlinear editing is that you can easily go back and make those changes in length. If you're interested in any nonlinear system, I found most manufacturers have demonstration tapes they'll be happy to send your way. Today we'll focus on the linear method of videotape editing. When you open up a brand new videotape and pop it in your VCR, you see snow or perhaps an empty blue screen. That means the tape is blank and your machines have no way of referencing the tape. The tape needs a control track. Control track is the portion of the videotape that contains the sync information that keeps all elements in a proper timing relationship. These electronic pulses allow your videotape to be referenced in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames on your tape. Control track sure sounds complicated. How do you get those electronic pulses onto your tape? Well, it's surprisingly easy. Every time that you record something, your camcorder does it for you. Simply put the tape you want to edit onto into your camcorder and keep the cap on. That way you get a nice, clean, black image to work with. Actually, pros call control track black. Remember the mic is working and will pick up noise. We don't want that. 
so put a mic adapter into the external mic jack to disable the mic. The camcorder is now recording a black video signal, an audio signal which we disabled, and control track. This is a graphic of how VHS tape is utilized. The middle part of the tape is where video is recorded, and the upper part being where the linear audio track is found. The bottom part is where you'll find the control track. Most editing setups have a minimum of two VCRs and an edit controller. And it's best to have a video monitor for each VCR. These are Panasonic machines, the AG1980s, and the edit controller is also from Panasonic, the AGA96. It works with the VHS and SVHS formats. Just like most things in this part of the world, everything works pretty much left to right. Over here to your left is your player VCR with its monitor. I have some raw footage playing through it right now. And over here to your right is your record VCR with its monitor. There are two types of edits, assemble edits and insert edits. Assemble edits lay down video, audio, and a control track with each edit. Great, you say you'll save a step and skip blacking your tape and edit and assemble all the time. Well, here's your problem. Say you've recorded a couple of scenes like I have here and you want to go back and make a change. At the end of the edit, the control track ends and you get this ugly tear yuck hole and now you've got a problem because both your previous picture and sound are erased for a few seconds. You can only go back and make changes in the insert mode. The insert mode requires that your master tape be blacked in advance. Here's the tape we blacked earlier. Let's put it in the recorder. The insert mode gives you much more flexibility, such as allowing you to edit video with no sound, or sound with no video, or both video and sound together. Of course, this is handy when you want to put together a story or build a program. Don't be intimidated by the edit controller. Let's break it down into smaller sections. These two buttons allow the controller to operate either machine. This green button activates the player, and this red button activates the recorder. These buttons here work just like the buttons on your home VCR. Play, rewind, fast forward, stop, and pause. Here is the jog shuttle knob. Push this button to activate it, and it does two things. The shuttle part rewinds or fast forwards your tape with hands-free operation. Just use the outer ring of the knob. And this inner part here is the jog device that allows you to view your footage frame by frame. Each second of moving video is actually made up of 30 still frames. The jogging device lets you view each frame separately. Go clockwise to go forward frame by frame and turn it counterclockwise to go in reverse. This part of the edit control is where you create your edit points and perform the edits. The edit controller will let you compile up to eight sets of editing commands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And perform them continuously. Now that's handy if you're doing a rough cut of a production. But I found this best to do your edits one at a time for greater control. So let's start with and stay with program one. Remember, think left to right. Here's the program button. Push it and look above. You'll see this pointer and the number one. Now the editor will accept mark in and mark out commands. Let's find our first shot. Let's work with the player first. See, the shot I want is forward just a little bit. There. Now here's the first shot I want to edit onto my master tape. Go back to the program set of the edit controller and hit mark in. This particular Panasonic editing system is like a lot of other prosumer editing systems. It requires a mark out point on either the player or recorder to perform the edit. I suggest assigning the player the mark out point when you're building your program. And you'll probably want to assign the mark out to your recorder if you go back and make changes. Let's find where we want the scene to end. There. Now go to the mark out button and hit it. Look above and you'll see that the edit controller is displaying your mark in and mark out numbers that you've assigned to the player. Go to the recorder with our blacked tape. I like to go forward at least 10 seconds from the head of the tape before I assign my first mark in point. Dropouts occur most often at the head of the tape. Look at your edit controller's display. 
Do you still have a pointer in the number one? If not, go back to the program button and hit it. We have it, so let's simply hit mark in to tell the recorder that this is where we want the edit to start. Next is your mode select section. You can choose assemble, insert, which means video, and then the audio dub button. Our tape already has control track. Let's select insert and lay down video only. Moving along, here's the edit section where you'll find preview, edit start, stop, and review. Preview lets you see how your edit will look without actually putting anything on your record tape. Keep in mind, preview will not work if you edit in the assemble mode, which is just another good reason to edit in the insert mode. Let's hit preview and see what happens. Both machines are backing up to their exact mark in points that I've assigned them. Once they've reached that point, they'll pause, and then they'll back up a few more seconds and then they'll play at normal speed to allow the tape to settle on the heads of the VCRs. This is called pre-roll. The tape settles on the heads just before the mark in point to give you a nice clean edit. Preview looked good. Let's go ahead and lay it down for real. The edit start button takes care of that, but you must press it along with the preview button. In fact, press edit start slightly before and hold it as you press preview. The machines will go through the same process, including the pre-roll, and perform the edit. Let the machines stop by themselves, and then you can check it. See? It's a nice clean edit. Audio Dub works the same way. It allows you to put down your narrative or music on your tape. But remember, with VHS, you only have one audio track. Use an audio mixer with your editing setup. That way you can combine various sources onto your one audio track. I have the VCR audio coming into here, a CD player feeding into here, a cassette machine here, and a microphone feeds into here if you want to do your voice recording at the edit bay. It's also the easiest way to fade up and down your music. When editing a music video, lay the music down on tape first. It's pretty cool when the visuals change to the beat of the music. Instead of making your mark-ins the usual way by pausing the record VCR and then pushing the mark-in button, try this. Let the record VCR play and then hit the mark in button on the fly. That means without pausing the tape. That way you can easily edit to the beat. But remember, you must pause the tape before performing a preview or edit start function. Many but not all camcorders record in hi-fi. High fidelity is great. It gives you higher highs and lower lows but editing with hi-fi can be a bit confusing. Remember our VHS graphic? Here is your one linear audio track, and here is your hi-fi audio track. It's actually embedded within the video track of the tape. They are one. As long as your camcorder recorded in hi-fi, it's impossible to ignore the hi-fi accompanying the video. This is your player's audio display. It shows you the audio level on your tape currently playing. This is your recorder's display. It shows you the level coming in from the player. These boxes here let you know if you're monitoring the linear audio track or the hi-fi audio track. If the boxes are there, then the VCR is monitoring the hi-fi audio if you have hi-fi audio. If you remove them with your remote, then the VCR is monitoring the linear audio track. I always like to take away the hi-fi boxes before I begin editing. You ever edit your program? and then take your master tape and play it on a different VCR only to hear the original audio from your raw footage? That's the hi-fi audio embedded into your videotape. What you gotta do is turn off the hi-fi feature before showing your tape. Here's how you edit a news story like the pros. First, black your master tape. Then voice your script on a work tape. Your first edits build the audio portion of your story. Edit in your narration using the audio dub mode. If you have any sound bites from interviews, lay them down next with the insert and audio dub mode together. 
edit in more narrative if you have it, along with any sound bites till you get to the end of your story. What's being said in your story is your guide on what B-roll to show. So after your audio's all set, now it's time to go back and edit in your visuals using the insert mode. If the VCRs don't seem to do what you want them to do, here are a few troubleshooting tips. Be sure you see your pointer when you enter mark in and mark out points. Make sure at least one of the VCRs has a mark out point. Maybe one of the VCRs has shut down and needs to be on play pause. Be sure both VCRs are paused when you hit preview or edit start. Avoid negative numbers. Hit counter reset and start over. Check to see if you accidentally entered a mark in or a mark out on a different program other than program number one. If you did, hit the clear button and start over. It can be very rewarding to put together a tape that enlightens, teaches, or inspires your fellow students. I hope that this tape has answered some technical questions that you may have on videotape editing. But most of all, I hope that it's generated some ideas for your next videotape program. Take care and good editing.